So in my last video, I talked about my bag. And if you didn't miss that video, here's the molds that I have in my bag. I'll have the link in the description if you wanna hear about each different mold and the exact discs. But I essentially talked about how I've had those molds in my bag for so long. I knew them and I was just comfortable with them. And that's why I never really changed to discs that I reviewed because I knew and trusted those discs and I felt comfortable going back to them all the time. And I don't really have time to learn a bunch of new discs since I'm going to different discs to review. But I also talked in that video about how I don't really play in a whole lot of events. So it doesn't really warrant that kind of commitment to a bag. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about like the molds that I like that could replace molds in my bag these molds, and then I'm gonna put them up to a vote. So you will get to decide what I will bag for this entire year. Everything that's just for competition, I'm not reviewing a disc, I'm not doing anything, I play in an occasional tournament or a league. You will decide what bag that will be for the whole year. So let's get into it. So I mentioned in my first video that there are two molds that I'm going to keep, not changing them. I just, I'm not ready for that yet. And I know some of you might have thought it was the Wraith, but it's really the Buzz and the Zone. It's not ready to get rid of those yet. But as we get to those molds, we'll talk about like why I am not comfortable getting rid of them. But the first thing I'm gonna get rid of, or you could decide if I have to get rid of, are my putters. I've been putting with Lunas for a long time. I've loved them. They're like effortless to like get them to where you wanna go. The only problem is, is if you're off at all, they're very easy to turn over. Even like driving off the tee, especially in upshots, if you're not throwing clean, those are very easy to turn over, which is great if you're learning how to throw or if you're wanting to learn how to throw clean, but when you're trying to depend on that in a tournament, I want a more reliable disc, maybe, possibly. You get to decide. But the first putter I've really gotten a hold of that I've really enjoyed that I might want to switch to is the PA3. Completely with that. Now, I've heard a lot of good things about the PA3, but there's someone at the tee, so we need to go to the next hole. But basically, like, Prodigy sent me out the PX3, which we were actually gonna talk about that in a little bit, because I, I really like the feel and the hand for that, and I, I kind of assumed the PX3 is just an overstable version of the PA3, and I really like the feel of PX3, so I picked up some PA3s, and I was like, if it's a similar feel in the hand, but a little bit straighter, then I might like that. And I've heard a lot of good things about the PA3. And I picked them up and I really like them. They're nice and beaded. They have a little bit of a blocky feel to them. Like they have like a blocky shape to the rim. So like if you don't like blocky putters, then it might not be for you. But I've really enjoyed these. They feel really nice in the hand. They're not too deep for me, but they fill the hand enough to where I have some confidence in them. Putting and throwing them, they are beautiful throwing. They go sneaky far because they don't have a whole lot of glide, but I like how stable they are. It won't turn over, but it won't give a whole lot of fade either. It's perfect stability. The other putter that I've really enjoyed and tried out is the Emac Judge. I've talked a little bit about this before, and this is very similar to this when brand new. It's just very stable. It's very forgiving when on throws, and it's just dead straight for those. And then for putting, it has a little bit of a micro beat on it, to kind of give me confidence on my little finger here. Other than the micro beat, it actually feels very similar to the Luna. It just doesn't have the kind of glide it has. So those are the three options that you can vote on. So either like the PA3, the Emac Judge, or me sticking with the Luna. And that would cover both my putting putters and my throwing putters for like more straight to understable shots. Then the next slot in my bag is the Jokery. And that one I've really just, wanted to throw up in the air just because I've, I've found a few molds that I like in that slot and that slot is kind of new to me in terms of filling it in my bag. The two that I've really enjoyed are the breaker. So this is one of my friend Will's. This is his breaker that I've borrowed. I still need to get it back to him. But I've really liked how this feels, how it flies. It's very similar to the Jokery. It doesn't have as much glide as the Jokery, but it still seems to go as far, which is a little weird but hey, I like it. And then the PX3, so this is the one that Prodigy sent me. I'm leaning more towards this solely because my snobbiness of mold minimalism, PA3, PX3, they're similar feel in the hand. They are technically different molds, but it's, it feels similar in the hand. It's basically like the PA3's rim, but like 
block or made deeper so the curve around here is a little bit bigger and then the bead is a little bit bigger i would say but this thing is just so nice this one's like like i described the jokery earlier this one's like a less glide jokery maybe a little bit faster and then this is like if the jokery had a little bit more glide um, is how i was explained both of these both very nice and will fill the slot by my zone which i am keeping this thing i just i just like it what can I say? I love zones. They're my bread and butter when it comes to overstable approaches and nothing really compares to it in my opinion. Like there are more overstable approach discs out there, but I like the overstability of this. Like I think it's the perfect overstability. It's not too overstable to give you really strong hooks and, and skips, but it's overstable enough to fight about just about any wind out there. A lot of people on a lot of my like overstable approach reviews say X is better because it's so much more overstable. I like the zone because because of how overstable it is. Like I don't want it more overstable, I don't want it less overstable, I want it that overstable. That's just my personal preference. Here's might be different. The zone is staying in my bag. Then my mid ranges, my understable mid, we talked about the buzzes, those are staying. My understable mid, I am choosing between I guess three still. All of these I'll have polls. Be able to find the polls on my community page. Just go to my channel's homepage, hit the community tab, and you'll see it there, all the polls for the different things. You can vote there. You can also follow me on Twitter. You can vote there. I'll have the polls there. And then on my Instagram, I'll have the tags here, and then they'll be in the links in the description below. All the polls will be there, and they'll be posted today by noon central time to kind of give people some time to see the video before going and voting. So, but the three I am choose I am like going between for understable mids. One, my Rock 3s to keep my Rock 3s in my bag. Uh, I have a beat up Rock 3 and I have probably like nine or 10 beat up Pro Rock 3s or Mick Pro Rock 3s that I could cycle in. Beautiful, I love it, it's awesome. But the other ones, one would be the Discmania Origin. This thing is so nice. It's nice and shallow, so for my tiny hands, there it's pretty great. So this one's just very understable. I think I would have to beat it up a little bit more to be exactly like my Rock 3, but this thing just glides for days. And it's actually better for four hands than my Rock 3. The bead kind of gets in the way for my Rock 3. That's actually why I would go back between the Rock 3 and the Buzz. And that's kind of why I stuck with the Buzz long term. We're not talking about the Buzzes. Origin's one option. Then the Uplink is the other. This one's a little bit more understable than all of them, but I think I like that. Like, cause my Buzz is starting to get pretty understable. Then this is just very understable. And this is very nice when I get into troubles. It'll flip no matter what. It's like, and no matter what situation is gonna turn over. It's just nice to have a disc like that. Not nice in the wind, but nice every other time. Then my buzzes, they're staying. I just really like how it feels in my hand, how fast they are, how stable they are. They're not too overstable, but they're not too understable. They're just perfect stability, in my opinion, for my game. And the glide, like, the buzzes surprisingly don't have a ton of glide compared to similar discs. So like the Pathfinder and Emac Judge, or Emac Truth, sorry. Those things are much faster and much more glide, or the Hex, for example, has a lot more glide than the Buzz. I like how the Buzz doesn't have as much glide as those. It makes it more controllable for my game, and so I have a lot more confidence in it uh, throughout the whole the whole game. And these ones, they just feel so good in my hand for backhand and forehand. Uh, that's why I love these the most over Rock 3s, because the bead would always kind of get in my way. When forehands, these kind of just give me a cleaner release, and I use them for a lot of get out of trouble stuff. So, also it's super bright out, so um, I, I just thought I'd stay in the shade and it's hot, so sorry if it's not an exciting view. Then a disc that I am adding in the bag, that's not up for vote, I am adding it, is the Supreme Fugitive. So this will just be a new slot in my bag. It's just nice and overstable. It's like, it's a more usable Justice. It's very similar to the Zone, I'd say it's like a faster, touch more glide than a zone, but the stability is very similar. It's so fun to use to check out the Supreme Fugitive. It's, it's so good. It might trickle out as the season goes on as I like play and I'm not using it as much, but right now it's super fun to throw and I think I could benefit from having it in the bag. Also really quick, if you didn't notice, a lot of these throws are from rounds or videos that I haven't posted on this channel. That's because they are Patreon only videos. If you didn't know, we had a Patreon, it's linked below in every 
video description, patreon.com slash Apollo Disc Golf. One of those videos was from last month where I played Black Hoof Park for the very first time. So course designed by Eric McCabe here. 10,000 foot wooded course. It was, it's awesome. And the second one will be posted on Monday for this month. And that one I played Bad Rock Creek, which is the course that they will be played at the Kansas City Wide Open Silver Series event in July. So if you're wanting a preview of that and see me and Wes play it in the rain and it's all wet and gross, then uh, yeah, it'll be on Monday on patreon.com. And there you get a lot of perks, like an extra video a month. You get some discounts to the store or free shipping, depending on the tier that you sign up for and Discord benefits. So if you want to check that out and support the channel, you can do that. And I'm going to start posting all of my YouTube videos on Patreon, starting with all of the videos that I have posted this month. So that is a great way if you want to view all of my content ad-free, you can do so at patreon.com slash And it's a great way to directly support what I do. So. Plus every disc that I talk about in this video will be linked below and a lot of them you can get at apollodiscgolf.com. Then that goes to my fairway drivers and the other mold that is for sure making it not up for debate are my craves. So I got two Fission craves from Anthony and these ones are pretty flippy for craves as from what I hear. This white one is just very flippy and turns over for me. And this one turns over a little bit, but it, this one comes back. These two are very much similar to my Echo Star T-Bird. And while I have one spare, if I throw those in the water, like that's, that's, that's it. I don't have any more of those. They're not making any more of those. It's gonna be really tough to replace them. So I thought it would be nice to find something that was similar to it out of the box. Didn't think it existed, to be honest. I've thrown a lot of discs. Um, this is actually probably the closest thing I've ever come across for. So I really like these. These will be my workhorse, workable fairway drivers. And I'll probably pick up a Proton or Electron Crave. I, I do have an order of MVP coming in. So uh, once those come in, I'll have those on the site and I'll have them on the email list. If you wanna join the email list, go to the homepage, scroll all the way down. You have a little slot there. You can enter your email and subscribe to the email list. And uh, I'll let you know when MVP comes in. The next is the stable T-Bird slot. This one is up for debate and up for vote. There's gonna be four options for this one. And that's gonna be keep my T-Birds. So I'll have stable T-Birds or T-Bird 3s in the bag along with the Craves. So like once the Craves get as most stable as they can go, then I'll fill it with the T-Birds or one of these three. So the other ones are my favorite vote that I would prefer to switch to. So like earlier I said, I prefer the PA3s and the PX3, the understable mid, I would, I'm up for grabs. I would prefer the Evader, but again, you guys decide if you want to allow me to throw what I want to throw, then the Evader I think would be it. Cause this thing is just, it feels so nice. It's just a very straight T-Bird uh, out of the box. It's very comfortable in the hand. It's like a, it's like a T-Bird for smaller hand people. So. It's, it's, it's great for me. And this is sneaky good in the wind. There's so many winds that I've thrown this in before that I thought would surely turn this over and it just like pops up and just flies on a rope and then gives me a touch of fate at the end. So this is, it's money. The other one would be the rival. I would not complain one bit if uh, you guys voted for this one and I had to throw the rival because uh, Legacy is sick, the rivals are sick, the pinnacle plastic is sick, and it feels very close to a T-Bird. It might be a touch deeper, at least it feels a touch deeper in the hand, but the rest of it is very T-Bird-esque and Legacy is just awesome. I would not complain a bit. Then the last one, uh, Paul Macbeth fanboy, so the Paul Macbeth Athena. This is a test flight one. This one's pretty beefy, so this would be my more overstable one. And then I'd get a couple stock ones, or one stock one probably for like a Heiser Flip uh, T-Bird. Then I'd have Craves. So any of these I'd be fine with training for the T-Birds, but um, I'll have all of these, those for up for pull as well. Then my Firebird slot. So I have the Firebirds. I would not complain about if you voted for me to keep my Firebirds because uh, I probably have 12 different Firebirds of different stabilities. So I'm, I'm pretty set for Firebirds forever. But if I had to switch, I'd, I'd probably switch to this. It is the prototype Saki Bomb Felon. This thing is really nice. It feels nice. It's very fast, but it's also still very overstable. I'll have this either vote Saki Bomb Felon or stick with you. Firebirds, you filthy animal. Then the last, <laughs> I debated a long time whether or not I should put this up for vote because 
Um, I feel like you guys are going to hurt me a lot and hurt my heart because my heart and soul is with the Wraith. I have so many Wraiths. I have uh, lots of backups. I know how they fly. I can go in and find exactly what I need for replacements if I do need to replace them. I love my Wraiths, but there are other great drivers out there that are very competitive to the Wraith, and I thought I'd put both of those up for grabs. And the most recent one would be this DD1 from Discmania. It just came out recently. These are so nice. Like I would probably pick up a couple more of these teal ones to be my main workhorse and try to beat this thing up as much as I can to have two or three of the teal ones. And then I have uh, an orange one that's a little bit more overstable. I might need to go to destroyers a little earlier when it gets windier because I don't think that orange DD1 is as overstable as a halo wraith, but these would be very serviceable for me. But this is up for vote against the wraith or the um, obvious grace. You can vote and have me throw graces all year. That would probably, uh, it would be the easiest in terms of finding the discs that I like and throwing them and working them into my game because the DD one's so, so scarce right now. There's only one run of S line, but it would also be the hardest because, uh, I just love the Wraith so much. And this is the biggest competitor to it. So if you make me throw the competitor, I don't know what I would do. I would throw it, obviously. I would, I would probably enjoy it, but I wouldn't want to enjoy it more than my race, so that scares me. But I guess that's up to you guys. So, the vote's yours. You decide what I throw this year. Please be nice. Okay. Bye.